Let's go to the opinion room and see what Nina's guests are making of that. Yeah, just before I come to the guests, Tom, some potentially breaking news in the opinion room. Uh, one of my guests earlier, Isabel Hardman from The Spectator, a source of hers has told her that Nigel Farage has lost Thanet. Obviously, that's not confirmation of that result, but that is what Isabel Hardman is hearing. Let's pick up on Douglas Carswell's point, actually. Um, his colleague uh, speaking earlier about electoral reform. I'm joined by Katie Ghosh from the Electoral Reform Society. And if you don't recognise my other guests, you should probably be going to bed right now. Brian May, of course, from Queen, but he's here tonight because he's been heading up the Common Decency campaign. Brian, you uh, think that politics is broken, you're calling for reform. Where does a result like tonight, if the exit poll is correct, leave that kind of campaign? Um, I think whether it's correct or not, what the British public is saying is that they don't believe in the two-party system anymore. I think that's kind of indisputable. And I personally would like to not see a coalition. I, I think this country's seen what happened in the last election, you know, and, and I think the coalition is where it all went wrong. And my justification for saying that is, is the collapse of the Lib Dems now. I think people actually were disgusted to see them get into bed with, with people who, with whom they profoundly disagreed and actually make another bully in, in the House of, of Commons. You know, so I would like to see whoever gets into number 10 run a minority government and have to talk out every issue in Parliament. That's what Parliament's really there for, you know, to, to give us a say, because, you know, every issue should be debated. At the moment, we've, we've been in Parliament, as you know, a lot, you know, deb um, campaigning for animals, and basically the debates have no effect. The, the votes have no effect. You know, the government just charges on because it can, yeah. because of the whip system. I would like to see that change. Katie, you're nodding in agreement there. I think Brian's absolutely right to suggest that the two-party system is dead or should be. What this election night is really telling us, and we can say this confidently before the results have even come in, is we're trying to cram six or seven party politics into a two-party system, mm -hmm. and it just doesn't work. And there are going to be millions of voters, whatever the individual or collective results are, who will feel really that their, their voices haven't been heard. They'll have voted in large numbers for the smaller parties, UKIP, Lib Dems and the Greens, and they won't don't see their voices heard and crucially they will not see their votes turned into a fair share of seats in our Parliament. Do you think then either of you that this is the election where people will look at the share of the votes and actually say enough is enough because there isn't the appetite obviously for the for the two main parties to, to progress with no, this? I, I certainly hope so and, and I think we need a kind of Parliament which is hung in the old sense of the word, and I think there's been a lot of scaremongering about that, saying it would be a disaster. It won't be a disaster, it would be great. And I think in that atmosphere, we could get a change in the electoral system. Mm. And please God, we do, because and that's what this is about. Mm. You know, because as you say, so rightly, so many people in this country, but you know, maybe 50% will feel at the end of this election that their view wasn't represented. It's got to change. We this know it works month. elsewhere, don't we? Um, in so yeah. many countries, you know, most of Europe has fair proportional voting, where people see their choice reflected in their national parliament and I think Brian's absolutely right to say there's going to be a real impetus for change now people have changed they want to express a wider range of preferences than they ever had before we're seeing the established parties struggle to get sort of two-thirds of the vote that's a lot of other people who want to support a wider range of parties mm. and we've also seen and again we don't know what the exit poll really means but we've got a hung parliament first past the post cannot even produce what it's supposed to do which mm. is an outright winning government mm. so I think electoral reform Form is firmly back on the agenda. And what mm. warnings for the smaller parties, given what potentially looks like has been a, an absolutely astonishingly bad night for the Liberal Democrats, the damage of, of, as you said earlier, about being in a partnership? I think it's a lesson. You know, whoever goes into a coalition is going to face that kind of backlash, I think. So I, I would advise everybody not to. You know? But I think it's, it's in the public interest that they don't. I firmly believe that. Mm. I still have my pie charts. This is what happened last time in a typical seat. And these are the people who didn't vote. You know, why didn't they vote? Not necessarily apathetic, but because of what you said. They perceived that there was no chance for their voice to be heard. Has to change. Brian May and pie charts in the opinion room. What more do you want? He's on Facebook straight after this, um, taking your questions. So if you want to join Brian May and ask him questions about badgers, common decency, or indeed Queen, he's on Facebook straight after this. Tom. I think our graphics department needs to learn a thing or two. That was very interesting. Now